Welcome, 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 everybody. I uh, hope your conference experience uh, has been great so far. Um, thanks for coming into our session, our, um, our workshop for the next hour. Um, we are going to focus on um, behavior change design, um, techniques for behavior change, and social impact. We're going to talk about um, how to think about and use um, behavioral science uh, in the way that um, you work to develop um, programs, communications, initiatives that you have. Um, and we're gonna give you some tools to explore a bit today and um, some resources, some of which Olga has posted in the chat already, um, and some resources that you can um, explore on your own and hopefully tools that you can integrate moving forward. That is our plan. So, um, great. Welcome to the introduction. And um, we're gonna talk about specifically uh, two categories of tools and methods that you can use. Uh, category one uh, around behavior change techniques, which we will teach you about. Um, and, um, and category two, the, the functions of your intervention. So we'll, we'll tell you how these uh, work together and, um, and how you can think about um, using behavioral science and evidence-based behavior change techniques um, and intervention functions together um, to build, uh, analyze, test interventions that you put out in the world. Um, this is us. Uh, we'll say hello really quickly. Olga, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, my name is Olga, and I am a behavior change designer. I work with impact startups, nonprofits, and impact investors to help them apply behavioral science and design thinking to their products, programs, and initiatives. Love that. Uh, folks, i um, Dustin DiTomaso. Uh, I lead a behavior change design uh, discipline for a, an agency called MadPow. Um, we work primarily in the healthcare space, also financial services and well-being, um, with the goal of um, how, again, how we can build uh, successful interventions, uh, effective interventions, and how we can bring methodologies um, like behavioral science, like human-centered design, um, like data and technology together, um, and and provide those tools for other teams and individuals to be more successful in their, in their efforts. Um, so we'll start here. We'll start with the big question uh, of, of why behavioral science? Why have we, we chosen to, to focus on um, behavioral science and uh, behavior uh, when we think about how do we, um, how do we make impacts um, in these areas, particularly in um, sustainable development goals? And um, you know, many of you may think about, about it this way already, and, and some of you may not. But when we think about these um, sustainable development goals and, and what we're trying to achieve in terms of outcomes and impact, um, behavior is really central. Human behavior is central to all of the outcomes that we care about. Um, there is a, uh, a human uh, behavior, individual groups, uh, populations uh, at the core of both sides of this equation, at the core that contributes to um, the problems that we're trying to solve and behaviors that are central to the solutions, the behaviors we want to change. So when we're working in this space, um, we can think about organizations, businesses, individuals that are addressing sustainable development goals as well as the goals themselves we're asking individuals, um, organizations, communities, governments to change behavior uh, in one way or another, um, usually uh, in ways that will positively impact the outcomes that we're focused on. When we think about quality education, we think about um, student behavior, we think about teacher behavior, we think about organizational behavior that can roll out 
um, schools and communities uh, where they don't exist. We can think about how to optimize um, education and what that takes, the, whose behavior uh, is central and necessary to make those improvements. When we think about things like um, recycling or single-use plastics, we think both about uh, the behaviors of the organizations that can make choices to cut down on the production of um, single-use plastics, and then the other side of what do people do with the with their plastic and single-use plastic? Um, do they recycle? Do they throw it on the ground? So on and so forth, these behaviors. And we can think that through for all of these uh, sustainable goals when we think about energy or, or climate, things like installing um, solar energy uh, or biking to work, um, instead of taking um, a car or fossil fuel vehicles, um, you know, has double benefit, right? Benefit on climate uh, as well as benefit on uh, health and well-being, right? So these are behaviors, the behavior of biking, the behavior of um, choosing to use um, solar where, where possible, not throwing our, our bottles on the ground. Um, and to, to, to think about these problems and these processes, um, in the, in the process of um, identifying social impact goals, uh, sustainability goals, and um, how we frame them, how we understand them, and how we design, design and test, uh, design, implement, and test solutions, um, focuses on, on a process that, that puts behavior um, in the center of that process, right? When we understand and frame the, the goals that we have in behavioral terms, who needs to do what, um, in order for what outcomes to be achieved, we can then design and implement and target those behaviors with techniques that are um, best suited or most likely to address the factors needed to change those behaviors. So when we think about very quickly the big picture um, of how do we change behavior and how do we put behavior at the center of the process, we can think about these, these steps. Um, we can think about understand starting with the problem, right? Understanding what the social or environmental problem is, um, who is at play, who contributes, who um, uh, who suffers for it? Who is the population? How do we measure that, uh, that impact uh, that we're looking to improve? Then really focusing on what behaviors are central uh, to achieving those outcomes. Whose behavior needs to change in what ways? What barriers uh, or um, facilitators influence those behaviors? And then getting down to where we focus today on when we understand behaviors and drivers of uh, behavior that fit within our problem, what do we do about it? What techniques can we use uh, to overcome those goal, uh, to overcome those barriers or amplify uh, those facilitators to change behaviors in a positive direction to achieve, to overcome uh overcome those barriers, achieve outcomes that we're looking to, uh, and implement those into solutions. And this is where we're gonna focus on today, right? This idea, these frameworks of behavior change techniques and frameworks of intervention functions so that we can analyze the work we have in stream or out there in the world, or start to apply to um, work that's in earlier development uh, for each and every one of you. Olga? Great, thank you. So. Without further ado, we'll start with something that we thought is going to be the most interesting part for everyone is actually strategies, techniques. What are the things that you can use in your programs, in your products, in your services, in your fundraising initiatives, whatever it is that you're working on? Uh, and uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, we're going to start with asking uh, people in the audience, how many of you have heard of Nudge? You can... Uh, put your answer in the chat. If that's something that you've heard of, that you are familiar with, are using, uh, like, dislike, don't like, uh, any feedback. Um, so that's uh, one. Uh, as you are continue to think about this, uh, how many of you have heard about gamification? That's my cue, there you go. Gamification, game design, rewards, 
incentives. Okay, excellent. So we have quite a few people who are familiar with these terms. Um, that was <laughs> that was our hope that those are gonna be the techniques that uh, many people have heard of or tried or applied in their pro programs or services. In fact, there are more than 90 different behavior change techniques according to just one methodology that you can be thinking of as active ingredients for your program, for your solution. Those are the techniques that can help people overcome the barriers and change their behavior. And these techniques, uh, actually, um, you can see them here, uh, and we'll share, that was one of the resources that we shared earlier. Those techniques are categorized based on the determinant that they are meant to address. Are you trying to help people increase knowledge? Are you trying to help uh, promote uh, or enable some behavior through environmental change? Are you trying to motivate people? Are you trying to substitute a behavior, uh, replace a bad behavior with a good behavior? So there's a lot more than nudges and rewards. And today our goal was uh, in the next 40 minutes to uh, get you acquainted with another nine behavior change techniques that you will be able to also say yes to next time someone asks. Um, and the nine behavior change techniques that we thought would be really helpful uh, to get to know today uh, Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, the nine behavior change techniques we selected are basically selected because they are uh, versatile. Uh, they apply to multiple different behaviors. They apply to multiple different outcomes, whether you work on SDG 3, 4, 8, or 13. Uh, some of these techniques would uh, still be, most of these techniques would still apply, and uh, they could be delivered in digital intervention in in-person intervention they could be delivered in the physical uh like a physical object uh, and that's what actually we'll get to uh as soon as uh, we go through some examples so uh the uh just to quickly go over them there is self-monitoring of outcomes of behavior there is instructions on how to perform the behavior there's the technique that helps uh, you help people conserve their mental resources. There's credible source that also may be familiar. There's information about others' approval, adding objects to the environment, social support, material incentive, and framing or reframing. And just another lens for you or another uh, perspective for you to keep uh, in mind as we continue is that these techniques are kind of... Uh, a blank, uh, you know, a blank uh, paper for you that you can draw on, that you can uh, use and continue to change because the techniques are just the definitions. And they also provide some examples, like in the link that I shared earlier, you can see what are the examples, but really they are not ready to implement solutions. They are, uh, in fact, the things that you are building from and you're translating them uh, using your knowledge of communities, using your knowledge of social, cultural, and environmental context of the, uh, the, the challenge, using the knowledge of your people that you're the target audience. And uh, without further ado, let's go to the examples to see how these techniques can be applied in the products or services. We have three examples so that you can get familiar with what the techniques could look like. Again, this might be uh, easier to see at some point through the full screen, so hopefully that doesn't interfere too much with the chat. Uh, but uh, example one, so we're looking at the digital app. The digital app is meant to help people pay off the debt, right? Uh, if you look closely at what this app is trying to do and you try to apply a behavioral lens to this, you'll see that there's uh, at least three behavior change techniques. On, on screen one, you'll see that the app is actually providing a material incentive for people to join, to join this app, to use this solution to pay the debt faster. Uh, on the second screen, once the participants join, you can see that they are getting actual practical support because the app immediately pays off the chunk of their debt, making the behavior of paying off the debt more likely to happen because it makes it easier. And then on the third screen, you see that uh, it uh, creates the technique, the method for them to self-monitor the achievement of the outcome or paying off the debt. Our second example is a website or a crowdsourcing platform that is designed to help uh, 
fund career opportunities for people experiencing homelessness. You can see here that there are three behavior change techniques that you can spot right away. Uh, uh, we can start with uh, self-monitoring of the outcomes because you see that uh, Matilda is trying to raise funds for uh, becoming a hospitality worker. And there is a special amount that she's targeting. The platform allows her and her supporters to see and monitor how well she's doing towards achieving this outcome of uh, getting the funding. So getting the funding is the behavior in this case. Uh, then she is getting social support, the practical support, because people can contribute to her fund. You see in uh, button number, number two. And then you can also share the campaign um, that is also a support so that can get more, uh, that can get more uh, uh, awareness for others. And then finally, you see how others are thinking about this. You see the number of supporters. You can see the uh, different comments from people who funded the campaign. So that actually provides you, Matilda, uh, people who are viewing this page, information about others' approval of this behavior. And then our final example, before we jump into our BCT scavenger hunt, is a uh, Cancer UK smart bench. So this bench is a really interesting physical, uh, like physical object, uh, an example of delivering behavior change techniques in the physical in the physical space uh, versus more common uh, digital. Uh, and you can see here that uh, number one is uh, obviously you're adding the bench <laughs> and you're adding the object to the environment to facilitate, to prompt people to donate. So you don't expect them to learn about your website. You don't expect them to uh, open the email. You actually are inserting the intervention in the environment through this bench. And then you put the visual and uh, verbal communication on the bench, communicating to them that this is a credible source. This is a Cancer UK organization. And number two. And then number three and number four kind of go together. And they often do go together. Uh, is providing instructions on how to perform behavior because it shows that and tells you tap uh, tap here to donate and to make sure that people, uh, you know, to minimize demands on mental resources, it tells you exactly how much you should donate. So that's kind of the example. And you've seen a digital app, a website, and the physical object of how these techniques could be integrated in a solution. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do the activity of uh, finding the techniques in the existing solutions. So uh, just a few things here uh, to note. The uh, difficulty will be increasing. So first we'll ask you to find one technique, then we'll ask you to find two techniques, then four techniques, then five techniques. So hopefully that would work. Uh, and then you'll have one minute for each of the slides. Uh, again, you'll see different examples, digital apps, websites, physical products. Uh, so let's try to get started. Uh, if you have any questions, again, please put them in the chat. Um, and here is our first example. Okay, so we're gonna time one minute before we reveal what's the answer. Uh, and the question is, which technique, which behavior change technique do you think this solution is using here? There's only one, so just put one number. Uh, there's numbers next to the next to the techniques in the boxes. Feel free to put the number. Let us know which technique do you think this solution aiming to reduce litter is using. Okay, start seeing some numbers coming in. And uh, in about 40 seconds, we'll do the reveal. So feel free to still add your number. Which technique do you think, which technique do you think it is using? Numbers between one and nine. Okay. Let's see, we've got six, seven, four, six, four, six. We got eight, we got nine. Okay, more nines. Okay, so we can do the reveal. And the technique that this behavior change intervention 
or physical object in this case is mostly leveraging that you can observe uh, is that it's adding object to the environment to make it really easy for people to do the behavior. There's, of course, others. And actually, I agree uh, with Dave and Daniel who mentioned number four, because in a way, uh, indirectly, if you think about that, the box the box front uh, is transparent and you see other people doing it. I think that uh, in, a, in a way that is information about others approval. So it's not information necessarily about others approval as it relates to the long-term goal of, uh, you know, SDG number 14 and avoiding having the cigarette butts in the ocean, but it's definitely helping um, to communicate that other people are using this intervention and are also dropping their uh, cigarette butts there. So yeah, great, uh, great guesses there and some good engagement. So let's try one more time. Uh, we have four more examples for you. So this might be something familiar to you. That's a fundraising letter, uh, donation uh, prompt on the website or in the, uh, in the digital app. Once again, uh, which two behavior change techniques do you think this solution is using? In this case, again, this is a letter. You'll see that there's two behavior change techniques plotting numbers between one and nine. Which two numbers? Uh, which two numbers is this solution using? Which two techniques do you think? are here. Okay, so we have two and three. Okay. We have another 40 seconds. Other answers, two and five. Okay. We have two and nine. Uh, Dave, you can add one more technique because there's two hiding here. <laughs> if you have any other guests, thank for Shayla. Okay, we have three and nine. Okay, Dave is two and three. Shayla is two and nine. Okay, we have another 20 seconds. Any guesses for which behavior change techniques is this fundraising letter trying to leverage? Two and five. Okay. Okay, let's do the reveal. So, the thing, oh, okay, here it worked. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have, whoever you have guessed, I know that they're partial correct guesses. Um, there's again some argument uh, for number two, for example, being present as well. Uh, but uh, the most prominent, the most uh, active ingredients of this fundraising letter are credible source. And we highlighted uh, the logo of UNDP uh, on the top, um, in the top left corner, and then framing and reframing. So like why framing and reframing? If you read this letter throughout the whole text, there is uh, not so much or any mentioning of donation. It's always being referred to as making a gift. So it says, make a gift to create this with your gift today. We'll, so this is the implementation of the technique of framing and reframing of uh, helping people see the behavior from different perspective. And that's uh, what, we, uh, what we, we see here as the behavior change techniques. Um, and as for number two, I think that, again, overall, you could also say that, uh, you know, providing instructions as it relates to, like, how much money you should donate or helping you decide exactly the amount that could be also uh, identified. But uh, the main, the most uh, prominent would be credible source and framing. So you can note those. Um, and uh, great job on... Uh, doing uh, all the guesses. We have three more examples. So this time we'll have a look at, this time we'll have a look at community-based program. So this community-based program is uh, tackling SDG number three, and it is focused on 
empowering communities to adopt farm-to-table organic lifestyle. And uh, it provides trainings, uh, it's uh, providing the courses. So you can see, again, from, the, uh, from some of the screenshots of what is happening during this in-person intervention, uh, what, are, uh, what is the intervention based on? So please, uh, in the chat, post your guesses on which two techniques do you think you can observe or identify which two behavior change techniques uh, you think this intervention is leveraging? Okay, we have two, two and seven. Okay, we, we uh, uh, quarantine, we have uh, two techniques in this one. So if you have any second number that you'd like to add, two and seven, three and seven, four and seven. Okay, so two and seven for quarantine. Two and seven for Kirsten, two and six for Lynn, three and seven for Shayla. So people are convinced that seven is there. <laughs> Almost everyone got seven. Uh, okay. okay, okay, okay. So let's do the reveal. Which techniques does this intervention leverage? Okay, so Almost everyone got number seven, social support practical, because those are the actual courses. Those are the, the trainings. People get practical support and being taught how to cook healthy recipes. Um, and uh, there's, I mean, in any of these interventions they'll be sharing, there's a lot of behind the scenes and other components that many of you have guessed right. But as it refers to this one, you can break it down into instructions on how to cook or how to perform the behavior and providing practical support of actually helping you to do this. Okay, um, and really, really good job on guesses. I think that this one was one of the best rounds so far. We have two more, and as we promised, they're becoming increasingly more difficult. Uh, there's two more interventions, uh, one of them digital, one of them physical. And here we ask you to think about what are the four behavior change techniques that this one single screen in the app that is helping you to save unsold meals is using. So this is just one screen, there's more, but in this screen only, which behavior change techniques can you see? Uh, four numbers, please. And you have one minute. This became too difficult. <laughs> Any four behavior change techniques? If you're not sure about the four, feel free to drop in the numbers that you are more certain of. Okay, 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 okay. So we have two, four, seven, eight. We have two, four, eight, nine. That's good. We have three, four, eight. Two, four, eight, nine. Two, five, nine. And a few more seconds. Eight, nine, two, four. Three, four, seven, eight. It's like a lottery. <laughs> okay, let's do the reveal. Um, one, two, seven, eight. Okay, for those of you, actually, uh, Jacqueline got it. Yep. Absolutely, right? Uh, two, four, eight, nine. Congratulations. Um, so, instruction on how to perform behavior, information about others' approval, material incentive, and framing, reframing. Uh, just to highlight a few, uh, you can, if you basically look at the, at the, uh, right bottom, no, upper right corner, you'll see the, the number, right? The, the dollar sign. So it tells you that if you buy this, you'll save money, the material incentive. If you go where you see uh, closer to the bottom of the screen, the rating of how other people's rated it, that's practically the information about others' approval, like 4.5 uh, stars, uh, five stars. 
uh, framing it and reframing actually refers to the middle part. Instead of saying that those are leftovers or things that are unsold at the store, uh, they actually talk about in throughout the app and in this middle part of the screen as delicious food. So it's delicious food, it's delicious food left or delicious food uh, from the store. So they're trying to reframe the language to make it really appealing to people to participate in it, uh, to, to buy the unsold meals. And then finally, uh, the instruction on how to perform behavior, there is uh, the, the actual like time when you can collect it, address where you can collect it, so all the details. Uh, and really good job on uh, guessing uh, different techniques. We hope that uh, basically uh, this is going to be something that can help you spot them and see them and identify them, not only in this solutions, but in yours, uh, in your program, in your initiative. And now final one, this is going to be a difficult one, but that's the last one for behavior change techniques. So this is a really, really cool intervention that was designed by a group of students in the University of Washington. And uh, what it is, it basically is an insert, a flushable paper product that you put inside of the sanitary pad to help communicate to victims of human trafficking, which like how they can, uh, who they can call and where they can uh, uh, get help from. So you see the whole product, it's a physical product. Uh, now, if you can think through which five behavior change techniques do you think this product is leveraging? There is, uh, I think that many of you will probably see other techniques as well, which is excellent because there probably is more, but five. We, we definitely want at least five uh, numbers from you. Um, and we'll have one minute again to think about which ones we have here that are helping drive this behavior change. Okay. Okay, we have six two seven eight five. Yeah. We have two five six seven nine. One two six seven nine. Two three six seven nine. Six seven nine is uh <laughs> definitely two three six seven nine. Two five six seven nine. I'm trying to remember what mm -hmm. those are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just by numbers. Uh six two seven nine. Two five six seven nine. Okay, it's it should definitely be six seven nine. Yeah. Um, there's too many of those. Uh two five six seven nine from Daniel. Two six seven nine uh from Darren. Okay, let's do the reveal. Which behavior change techniques yes. is this? Yeah. Product tackling human trafficking, leveraging. Okay, so it's two, three, five, six, seven, nine. Okay, did anyone get it? Absolutely right. I cannot see. I think that I think there's too many nines. <laughs> I think that quarantine got close. Six to seven. Yeah, six to seven. Um, okay, so yeah, let's just quickly uh, go over some of that and then we'll jump to the second activity that hopefully is going to be equally fun and similar examples. So, uh, okay, we have here, uh, if, you, if you were thinking of, uh, okay, let's say, like many people have answered nine as framing yeah. or reframing. Uh, yeah. In this specific case, if you were to zoom in and look at what this intervention is doing, it's not uh, directly doing the framing and reframing because it still is using the same words, the same terminology. Like if you read it, it still is talking about uh, like, have you been a victim of trafficking? Uh, you know, like the imagery. So it's very much you know, direct di direct communication about the, the problem. So framing and reframing would be, for example, if, uh, um, you know, like in the previous cases we saw like donation that might be considered as negative is being reframed as a gift. Leftovers that might be seen as negative is being reframed as 
delicious food left over at the store. Um, so that would be more of a, a framing, reframing when you identify that there is some negative word, negative uh, terminology that people might be reluctant to, uh, you know, engage with or respond to, and you swap it with the same way of expressing it, but positive, like you frame it into positive term. Um, if you, uh, so yeah, credible source. So if you zoom in on the first, so the, the object is itself the object that's an insert. I thought that was, uh, like that, that should have been, uh, Part of almost everyone's uh, response. Response. Uh, the credible source. If you look at the left part of the insert, uh, there is actually a priest, a doctor, the victim, and I couldn't figure out who is the fourth person. But there is this uh, imagery that is, is supposed to communicate to you that, like, those are you know, like, kind of cover all the different credible sources that could be providing support to victim. They are not actively providing support to victim, but that is the uh, imagery, uh, because credible source is about communicating that this is uh, delivered through or approved by a credible source. Uh, again, they probably have done research, this team have done research to say that a priest, a doctor, and this fourth person are the credible source uh, when it comes to victims of human trafficking, which might be different in other cases, but that is the element. Um, yeah, and then... Um, basically instructions, the code itself. And it's so cleverly designed because you actually tear it, tear the number uh, off and it gives you the instructions like tear, flush, call on the second part of the insert, that's the instruction. Um, and you save the number and the saved number looks just like Chinese lucky cookie. So if the abuser finds it, it's not gonna be attracting the attention. And it's conserving the mental resources too, because you don't ask the victim to re remember the number that you need to call. You actually are giving them this uh, tool. So it's a really clever intervention. Okay, and on that note, uh, we're gonna, just so that we're not running out of time, we're gonna do some key takeaways from the behavior change techniques. Um, one key takeaway is definitely that behavior change techniques are, and many of you through, throughout this uh, activity have tried to uh, spot them, identify what they are. So they should be observable um, and replicable. And they are basically active ingredients of your intervention, of your program, of your service. They are the things that make, make it work. They are the ingredients that facilitate the change of behavior. Uh, the number, as you can, uh, you know, if you go back to five examples that we shared, the number can vary. You can have one behavior change technique be an active ingredient. You can have five or sometimes you can have 15 if the behavior is really comprehensive or the intervention is complicated. Uh, it really depends on what you're trying to solve. Uh, and then other two important things, when you're thinking about designing your impact program uh, in sustainable development, if you are thinking about it and you're looking at the outcome and you realize that the outcome is driven by behavior, the best thing you can do is to think about behavior and behavioral science as the core, like as the core uh, to like the core foundation to your intervention rather than a sprinkle on top. And if you think about it as the core, you basically go back to this behavior change techniques and you think about how can this behavior change techniques be translated into the messages, materials, and activities. So instead of thinking, how can we nudge someone to use my product that might not be that engaging, you're thinking of what is actually my product trying to do? What are the active ingredients? Or what Dustin will cover in a minute, what are the, what are the functions? What is my intervention function? What is the intervention trying to do? And finally, Behavior change techniques, as you have just observed in the last 15 minutes, can be delivered digitally, in a physical object, in-person interactions. So it doesn't really matter what is your program or service. Almost certainly you can uh, build behavior change techniques. You can build behavior change strategy inside of your solution. And now back to Dustin. <laughs> Thanks, Olga. That was great. And thanks, everybody, for your participation. Uh, more, more to come. Um, so as Olga mentioned, the um, behavior change techniques, um, you know, we focused on nine uh, out of 93, right, to give you a, a sampling 
uh, something digestible that we could work with, those behavior change techniques are the, the active ingredients, the what of your um, intervention. When we think about um, the goal of your intervention or how it's proposing uh, to work, we can think about these nine intervention functions, and there are nine, so that's good. These encapsulate um, broad functions, right, or descriptions of what our in intervention is doing um, to change behavior, right? When we think about these large buckets or these large categories of how we try to change people's behaviors, we can think about it um, along these these different functions. We can try to educate them on um, what it is to do, how to do it, and if it's a good thing. We could train them to build skills. We could try to persuade or convince them through communication. We can provide incentives. We could try to coerce them, right, to create a, um, a, uh, a, a an expectation of um, punishment or setback. We could physically change the environment to make it harder to do through restricting, through rules or laws or other objects. We can change that environment to make something harder or easier to do. We could model the behavior, like we heard a lot of modeling within the social support, or at least in the chat channel, around seeing other people do it with the Ronaldo example, was that modeling or not? Um, or we could try to you know, provide resources or make something easier to do for uh, a po an individual population in one way or another, right? So we can think about these broad categories as descriptions for what our intervention is doing and how um, it's aiming to change behaviors. And we can apply that to the same kinds of um, interventions we just looked at um, earlier. So, so when we think about, um, you know, we're going to go right back to the start and, and where we define those very specific behavior change techniques, we can also come up to that level and think about the intervention function. So in Tally, when we think about what Tally is doing um, in order to help people get out of debt faster. Um, we are incenting them, right? We are, um, in fact, the application is uh, helping people to save that money and it pays off debt or part of a debt. The, the behaviors that we're targeting, spending and saving behaviors, become you know, amplified or facilitated through the incentivization that the app uh, itself applies. Um, and it, it enables uh, people to save uh, and to change uh, spending and saving behaviors um, through the things that they can do with the, the application and the service. So we incent and we enable. When we think about Matilda and we think about crowdfunding um, and uh, you know helping people uh, get a leg up out of homelessness, the techniques that we looked at before, some of those granular techniques, um, bubble up to modeling, right? Showing um, the expected or the wanted behavior, right? So we can see here uh, through that technique of um, support, uh, we're modeling the behavior, right? We're, we're showing the support of others, um, making that visible to everyone who comes to the site. So we're mo modeling the expected behavior. We're giving them uh, a, a, a giant button, a way, for people to make those donations. And we are using uh, persuasion, right? 25 people need your support today, right? We're convincing or we're tying into emotional appeals um, to, to sway or to convince people um, to make those donations as well, right? So those are those techniques there. When we look again at the smart bench, right, you would simply just look at a smart bench and think, well, that's not a heck of a lot, right? Um, but there are a lot of techniques baked into it. And there's also a high number of intervention functions here. Um, we're changing the environment, as we talked about, we're placing a bench into the environment. Um, we're mo again, we're modeling the uh, expected behavior here as well. Um, we are persuading individuals um, to, um, uh, to make those donations. Uh, and then as Olga spent some time talking about the very specific techniques here within uh, making it easy to do, um, uh, we're enabling that 
behavior that we've targeted, making a donation, we're enabling it to be done um, in context, in the moment, right there where we are. So we can think about, again, how adding objects to the environment bubbles up to environmental restructuring, um, how, um, how we might persuade other individuals with this intervention, and how we make the expected or wanted behavior very easy. So we can think in terms of these broad categories. And often, um, this is where you know, many of us do spend our time or where, how we do think of um, our goals for our programs and services and initiatives. Um, and uh, this gives a language and a, and a category for and a framework for, for doing that. So let's take a spin through those activities again and, and see um, how quickly we can spot intervention functions in the same um, interventions we just looked at, products and services. So if we go back to uh, Ronaldo and, uh, and Messi, um, I didn't add numbers, sorry about that. Um, which two intervention functions uh, do we think this um, cigarette box uh, is, is using? I'm gonna type more letters this time. We'll give you a little bit more time because you might need to type letters. So yeah, which two intervention functions is it using? Feel free to post in a chat uh, and we'll do the reveal in about a minute and a half. Should have given you numbers. I didn't do a good job enabling. <laughs> okay, Shayla, environmental restructure and enablement. Thank you. Another 40 seconds. Any guess on? Okay, we got education and enablement, environment and enablement. On the other hand, maybe that would lead to remembering the, the functions better than the techniques when you have to type them up. <laughs> would be a good thing to test. Environmental and enablement, okay. Any more guesses before we do the reveal? Five more seconds. Environmental research. time. Illustrations. Boom. So um, very similar to adding objects in the environment, the names are, are uh, almost one in the same. We're restructuring the environment, right? We're changing a person's environment. We're adding this to the park. Um, the, the modeling could be the expected behavior. Instead of seeing a pile of cigarettes on the ground, um, we are seeing the cigarettes um, in the question boxes. There is a good argument to be made for uh, enabling as well. We're now giving individuals a place that's different um, than the ground to throw their butts. Um, but the argument could also be made that maybe there's a, you know, a, a trash bin right next, uh, right next door or by that people aren't using. This gives them an added prompt um, with a bit more um, you know, behavioral techniques baked in than uh, a regular everyday trash can. Um, but but enablement, I think, would be a, a very close third. So structuring and modeling through the, the visualization of the, the butts where they lay. All right, we'll keep us moving. Um, for the next one, uh, we go back to the fundraising letter. Um, when we think about the, the content and the structure uh, of this email, it is uh, relying on two functions to... Uh, urge uh, those donations. Which two do we think are present within this um, within this uh, email? Okay, the timer is on. I have about a minute and twenty seconds to find two intervention techniques and type them up in the chat. Okay, we have education, 
Go ahead, Dustin. I'm still in your vibe. <laughs> it's all right. No worries. I like it. Your voice is nicer. Uh, education and incentives, um, persuasion and, and modeling, two different. So we've got four different, different techniques in here. Another one, another round for persuasion and another one for education. Are we educating? Are we persuading? How do we know which? Uh, modeling has popped up as well. Can we, can we see? Can we help others see uh, the wanted behavior? Modeling. Okay, time. That was time. That was your timer, in fact. All right. Let's do the reveal. Persuasion and enablement um, is where we would uh, classify these. Um, enablement clearly here with giving people a, 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 a big call to action for how they can um, make that donation to you know one one click or or, or two clicks to do that. Um, much like the Cancer UK, same thing. Tap to pay. Um, sometimes we can get a little. Um, the lines can get a little blurry between education or persuasion. Are we teaching people um, what to do, how to do it, um, or are we convincing them that it is a good thing to do, right, through communication, whether that's um, through words, whether that's through imagery. Um, we we can um, you know we can take a close look and, and and make that call right it's it's a little bit different between you know appealing to facts and thoughts versus maybe appealing to uh, emotion um, or things like that and here um, with the language uh, we're we're focusing on persuasion versus uh, education the way that the the copy or the text is framed so you can take a look at that when we make the deck available and, and see if you agree. All right. The next one. So if we go back, uh, there are two here as well. Um, when we think about um, Refresh Live, which is bringing uh, cooking classes, demonstrations, fresh foods and vegetables to communities um, that need it. Um, what two intervention functions do you think this program uh, is using to help people adopt and sustain healthy eating lifestyles. Okay, you have one minute. Uh, I see modeling and education. Great. And we have three minutes. Education and enablement. Education and modeling, again, two for that. Great. Another round of education and modeling. Any others? Any others rolling in? For the purpose of time, because we have only four minutes left, let's just say time and Great. do the reveal. Oh, sorry. Skipped it. Oh, ha, there was three. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> There's three here. Um, so, uh, yeah. so, so this is a helpful distinction um, between education and, <laughs> good one, and training. Um, when we think, again, of, of education, uh, targeting um, knowledge, right, informational knowledge, um, uh, about the state or shape or reason of things. Training very specifically can focus on the building of skills, right? Those can be physical skills or mental skills. But here, you know, we're teaching people about fresh food, but we're also um, training them on the skills it takes to cook that food. So, you know, a fine distinction, but we, we do like to think about a, a, a differentiation between education and training. Training often uh, involves practice. That's a really great way to separate those two. Does this behavior um, 
involve or improve with practice versus uh, necessarily a one-time information dump. Uh, and then modeling as well, right? We're, we're showing or we're demonstrating um, the expected behaviors too. Uh, here, um, when we think about other components, there could be different uh, interventions as well. And do we have time? We do, we've got time. Uh, let's see if it's really two in this one, but one more, the good to go app um, that helps people pick up um, not quite expired food to, re re uh, that's not the most beautiful framing, um, but uh, <laughs> so that it doesn't go to waste. Um, delicious uh, end of day food, what two techniques um, or functions are being used here uh, in this intervention? Okay, the timer's on. One minute. And then I think we'll bring us home. Who shall be the first? As you are typing up the responses to which two, and we don't know if it's two because <laughs> Dustin will do the reveal and we'll find out. So if you see more than two, please feel free to add more than two. It's a um, if you have any questions, uh, I'm not sure if the room would close at uh, 3.45. Uh, so if you have any questions, we'll leave a, like a slide with our emails. And I'll actually, I'll type in our emails in the chat. Feel free to send them over in case we wouldn't have time to answer them live. Time for reveal. All right, so we see incentivization, two for enablement, so let's hope that's on there, and one for modeling. All right, what do we think? Boom. Yes! Nice going, Jacqueline. Uh, incentivization and enablement, right? We're, we're giving people the means uh, to change their behaviors and to reduce food waste, making it very easy for them to, to pick up food um, on location. And, uh, and they're in incented uh, to do so, right? We, um, we get a, a good volume of food for a way reduced um, cost um, and uh, not just um, for uh, the benefit of not wasting food. I'm going to get us to the end, but also, um, you know, there is a, a value trade off as well. So again, to wrap us, to bring us home, intervention functions, broad categories that we can think of in addition to behavior change techniques. They serve more than one function. We can educate and persuade. We can enable and, um, uh, and change the environment. They describe what our intervention is um, doing to change the behavior, while the techniques describe the how. And using these individually or especially together uh, really helps with the planning, designing, describing and evaluating um, the program services initiatives um, that we use and is a great way to get uh, evidence-based frameworks integrated into our, um, uh, into our design process. Okay. 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 Thank you, Dustin. Thank you. Final thoughts. Behavioral science is about so much more than nudges. Hopefully that's one of your takeaways today. If you are trying to improve the outcomes that are driven by behaviors, make sure that behavioral science is actually helping you design your program materials, messages, and activities, and is not just sprinkled on top in the end. And then uh, just for you, for what's the point, what's the value? If you actually understand what is your program, what is your solution doing, and you can break it down into the components uh, of what are the ingredients, what are the functions, you're actually going to be so much more successful and being able to continuously test and improve it. And that also would uh, impact your outcomes that you care about. So thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you learned some stuff. I put our emails in the chat so you can reach out to us with any questions you have and also you can find links in the chat to some of the materials and if people are interested we'll also share the deck uh, at least with those two email we already acquired feel free to post yours as well and we'll check with the uh, organizers if there's a easier way to share the deck with everyone as well so thank you all